In an area surrounded by water, many of us face the threat from a hurricane storm surge each year. Just last year, Tropical Storm Debbie flooded Bayshore Boulevard, and this was only a minimal surge of three to four feet. A tsunami is a way to conceptualize a hurricane storm surge. Take a look here at the Fukushima tsunami. It was a bit higher than Hurricane Katrina's 41-foot surge. The difference, though, is between how it forms. Strong winds flowing into low pressure drive water onshore in a hurricane, but a tsunami results from geologic processes. The last significant hurricane surge in the Bay Area was 1921 when a hurricane in Category 3 hit Tarpon Springs. An 11-foot surge put ships on land and leveled buildings. Since then, our largest hurricane surge came 28 years ago. More than half the residents did not live here when Hurricane Elena raised the gulf six feet on our coast. History shows a small number of storms have caused the most damage. Major hurricanes with winds over 110 miles per hour have caused 90% of the nation's damage. A Category 3 hurricane would soak 42% of Pinellas County, splitting it into two islands. Roughly 60% of the county's homes would flood in a Category 5, but certain types of beaches offer more protection than others. The next time you struggle to walk over these sand dunes, remember, that's a good thing. The bigger the dune, the healthier the beach. It's the first line of defense in stopping surge. Think of it as like a speed bump. As the waves go over the dune, they slow down and it keeps more sand on the beach. Not all storms cause the same amount of erosion along our beaches. In fact, here in Sunset Beach, you can still see the erosion left over from Debbie, a weak tropical storm. But although it was a weaker system, it sat in one spot chiseling away at Sunset Beach, which is why this area received the worst erosion in Pinellas County. Sections of the coast flood and erode more than others. Predicting coastline inundation is the specialty of oceanographer Hillary Stockton. Computer models at the U.S. Geological Survey figure out how much of the shoreline will change by factoring coastal elevations, wave forecasts, and potential storm surge. Dr. Stockton accurately documented vulnerable coastal locations in the path of Superstorm Sandy. She's using the same tools to pinpoint weak sections on our beach. The color indicates how likely or the likelihood that we'll experience dune erosion. So red means there's a very high chance that dune erosion will occur and white means it's not likely to occur. Along the entire stretch of coast, we experience dune erosion. And it looks like more dune erosion down towards Fort DeSoto Park. Exactly, and that's because the dunes are so low there. So low, in fact, that they experienced overwash, which is when the waves actually overtop the island and start to move sand inland. Even during light winds and blue skies, storm surge can rise and become dangerous. Meteorologists at the National Weather Service in Ruskin will test new storm surge warning products this year. It would be independent of a hurricane warning and could be issued even when a storm is not headed at Tampa Bay. Well, we're all familiar with hurricane warnings, but sometimes the impacts from a hurricane are well away from that hurricane. We saw that with Dennis a few years back. Uh, the hurricane warning for the wind was along the panhandle. However, we had above normal surge all the way up the west coast of Florida into the Big Bend area. And that's where a storm surge warning in the future could be outside of the hurricane warning, even if the skies are sunny.